Hi there. Welcome to another episode of Time to Taste Wine. This week, we're going to taste an Italian red from the Verona region of Italy. Uh, this is a 2020 Massi Fresco di Massi uh, Rosso. It is a blend of Corvina and Merlot. Italy has several excellent wine regions and over 500 grape varieties. So there are lots and lots of grapes that are grown in Italy that you only find in Italian wines, including Corvina. Verona is the geographical area and it's actually called the Indicazione Geografica Tipica and that is a smaller region inside the larger region of Veneto. So if you look at a map, there's Veneto, uh, which is a big area with a bunch of different wine regions, and then you go to the smaller area of Verona, and then in Verona there are some different areas as indicated on the map. There are some very important reds that are produced there. Probably the most important one is Corvina and also Corvione, which are both used to make Valpolicello wines. There are also Bordeaux varietals grown there, including, uh, of course, Cabernet Sauvignon, Cabernet Franc, Merlot, uh, Malbec, Petit Verteau, and a fair bit of Carmenere. There are also some important whites, such as Garganega, which is used in Suave wines, as well as Frulliano, Trebbiano, Chardonnay, and Sauvignon Blanc. Now, Massey, the producer, is famous for its Amarone wines. If you go to a liquor store, you would probably recognize the Massey label for Amarone and Camfiorne. So they have a couple of wines that are very um, noticeable. Most of their wines are based on uh, Valpellicello wines or the Verona region, although they have expanded to other territories such as Tuscany and even some other countries such as Argentina. The Massey Company was founded in the 18th century and has been family run since then and now uh, the same family, the 6th and 7th generation, are running the winery at this point. This particular wine, Fresco de, de Massey, Fresco means fresh, so this idea of this wine is that it is a fresh wine, fresh and fruity wine, meant to be enjoyed now. It's um, lower in alcohol and uh, should be uh, an interesting wine to try. This is an organic wine and a natural wine that is made with wild yeasts and is not put in barrels. It is just fermented in the primary fermenter and that's it. It is produced sustainably with a lighter bottle, so the bottle actually weighs much lighter than a regular wine bottle. Natural cork, no capsule. If you look on here, there's the cork and then you just see a little piece of paper on top of here. And so that this is completely plastic free. It's a, as I said, it's a lower alcohol wine. We'll find out how much when we do the tasting. Also, it's an unfiltered wine. Uh, they just use racking back and forth to remove the sediment. And apparently, from the reviews I've seen, uh, that there is no sediment in this wine. So that's a, a bonus. This wine right now at the BC Liquor Store is $20. So we'll see, is this a good deal for 20 bucks? Is this another um, really good find? Or is this the one to pass on? We'll find out today, and it's time to taste some Fresco de Massi. So I said uh, clear. Uh, medium ruby, sort of lighter side of medium, but I think it's still medium. Uh, on the nose, I thought it was really fruity. What I smelled first was just fruit. Like, like I think last week I smelled leather first. This one was fruit first. Uh, uh, clean, um, medium plus intensity, like I could smell it right, right from here. Uh, and I got lots of, of red fruit, like strawberry, red cherry, cranberry, plum, I got a little bit of blueberry, um, and then I got something floral, and I thought it might be rose, so I, I consulted with my expert, Catherine, and she thought it was more like freesias, but 
there's something floral there, but I just have a hard time picking out the floral smells. Um, maybe a t touch of pepper or something herbal in there, and maybe even a little bit of vanilla. I don't think there's any oak on this, but there's still sort of a vanilla-ish uh, smell. Um, so I, I think this is basically what you'd call a simple wine. I don't think it's like super complex, but sure smells nice. Simple wine. When I say simple wine, it's, just, it's not super, super complicated. But you can even tell, I mean, they, they sell it in a, a clear bottle, so it's meant to be drunk. You know, you're not meant to age yeah. stuff that's in a clear bottle, so yeah. All right, well, I'm, I'm excited to taste this now. Yeah. Hmm. Um, I said dry, I said medium plus, medium to medium plus acidity, uh, medium minus tannins. Um, medium alcohol, and it's actually 12%, so that's medium. Um, I thought it was light-bodied. I, I felt this is a pretty light-bodied wine, like just the mouthfeel is, is nice and nice and light. Um, I said medium flavor intensity and a medium medium finish. I mean, the, the finish was fine. It just, it just sort of dissipated after a while. Um, I did not get as many um, uh, things on the palate as I did on the nose. Um, basically some red berries like cranberry, raspberry, plum, uh, some herbal, but it had a nice taste to it. It was a nice overall fruity taste, which was fine. Uh, I thought it was, yeah, a very refreshing wine. Um, I thought it was balanced, like it was very enjoyable to drink. The length was pretty good, the intensity was okay. Uh, not particularly complex, but that's fine. So I, I rated it as good to very good. That's why I rated it as. Yeah. And for twenty dollars, yeah, um, good bang for your buck. Oh, absolutely! If you are looking into booking a wine tour of the Okanagan next year, and you are interested in a customizable, flexible, and completely private wine tour in the comfort of your own vehicle, please check out the link below in the comments.